Your headache rages with a fierce second wind, and every s step is a hammer and nail in your psyche. The stranger's reckless pace only makes matters worth worse. His arm, like a vice grip, dragging you down a mis maze of twisted alleyways until at the last string of paper lanterns appear. Buoys in a sickening sea of, of night. The red cherry glow in the red lantern lane. Within waves of jasmine and sandalwood incense, memory flashes fear away. This might be the only place that could convince you to keep on living, even just for a night. The gas mantle above the door fills you with fondness, cleansing the rust of your mind-gouging hangover. You've arrived at the Red Lotus Den, the only place you've ever felt at home. No need to be pulled along now. You go inside willingly. Happy now? Body aches and deep uncertainty in the bones. It's hard to be happy like this. I'm out here. Allow me to rephrase. Have you ever been happy? Can't say that I have, but I've gotten close to it here. Withdrawals, they can make you. They can muddle our heads and make us weak. No worry. You'll feel better soon. Am I in a brothel? Yeah, let's get to the changing area. Towels and bathrobes disarrayed in cubbies. Illusionist. Ooh, this is a special thing that only I can do. Away from Pry Pry is a fine place to change of appearance. Let's see what to do. Cast your illusion. Sight from the fire, hearing from the aether, smell from the air, and taste from the water. Touch down the earth in another form. Now let's play it safe for the time being. No need for any confrontation. Aw oh man, I look dapper as balls. Let's see, there's a bath. I'm fully clothed, I'm not hopping in any tub. Street lamp glare. Guttering grease lamp pings through the glass. The burning feels good in my eyes, like, like I'm slowly waking up. The mahogany bar. A brass lintled mahogany bar aligned with candles casting eerie shadows on the centaur behind it. The cloying scent of mange, I'm not surprised, but did it have to be a centaur? Some centaurs have been kind to me. I won't pass judgment until he proves me wrong. Oh, is that what I look like under the illusion? Alright, a little dapper. Then again, there's Brixby. He's one centaur with his head screwed on straight. 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 Blech. I wonder if he sleeps standing up. Hey, Brixby Browncoat, the owner here at the Lotus. Most nights he's waiting at the bar, so I hope he hasn't taken ill. Fortune favors the bold. Let's get this over with. All right, who am I talking to? Mass Stranger or the Bouncer? Well, I came with the Stranger. Let's see what he's doing. Let's not tarry. The sooner we ask for permission to enter the Lotus, the better. All right, I guess I talk to him. The centaur leads his misap misshapen chin, a shelf for his cigarette, judging from the jingle of bad teeth. Mmm, I can see you come in. How can I help? Entrance to the Lotus, please. I have to check the list. Now, did you say... Did... Now, where did Brixie say it was? Out trots Mr. Browncoat, surely come to see what the fuss is about. He wears a long face countenance with a golden pocket watch and a laver tinted pince nez. A pair of eyeglasses with a nose clip instead of earpieces on his aquiline nose. There's a delta of wrinkles around his eyes, the same sienna brown as his shiny coat of fur. 
Now, here's Atticus. He's happy I've arrived in human form, although he knows it takes a lot of energy. Glad to see you, Bixby. And you as well, Atticus. I'm glad to see you brought a brand new customer. Now then, paradise awaits beyond the curtain. Bixby ushers you through the door and leads the way down the back stairs. The stranger on your heels feels like, like a stubborn shadow. A red lotus is draped in a haze of pale smoke dotted with flickering candles and incense glowing like cinders in the night. The smell of burning opium is dark and rich, like the batch, like a batch of floral biscuits with a sharp afterbite. The pale red glow from the Chinese lanterns paints the space in perpetual twilight. It's easy to lose track of time within these walls, whilst away from your, while whiling away your days in a blissful waking dream. What's that gear-clattering racket? A jet of steam cuts through the quiet of the den. What a curious machine. I wonder how it works. It's got an arsenal heart drum. Uh, that's a top-flight boiler. Ball and socket legs... Pressurized feet, there's nothing run in the mill about it. Sorry there, didn't mean to startle you. Off it goes, heading it for the private section. Alright. Where'd that masked stranger get off to? Opiomaniac. Yeah, let's talk to him. That should be fun. The sleeping poppy head is draped over the mattress in the corner, drooling idly onto his shirt. Fancy that, an errant wallet poking up out of the corner of his slacks. It yearns to be free. There's a risk right over it, though. It'd be a risky lift. Or not. My hands are still feeling a little shaky. Let's not murder people just yet. Incense pot. Sunken area. Anything cool over here? Let's see what these guys are doing. The floor pit has benches with tufted upholstery and pillows costing a hay penny an hour. Oh man, half a penny an hour. I can't afford that. Normally a pillow and a pipe sit it is more than enough to fit my fancy. And I sit here to save, to save money buying a half a bowl at a time. Apparently I love opium dens. Learning a lot about myself today. Two worksmen blissfully f flee fr fr bleh, blissfully free of the waking world. When they woke, I should hope they'll be refreshed. Oh, a bookshelf. Sturdy yet musty old bookshelf. The spine showing such titles as Arcane Magic on the Eastern Edge of Ruin, Opium Through the Ages, and Parlor Games Love in the Dreamtime. Alright. And Dwarf and Automaton. Evening, stranger. Dwarf has a warm and am amiable look, with a set of crystal blue eyes, sharply intelligent, and a red mustache that is so full it could crawl off his face and build a cocoon. I got one of those. His, his beard is elegantly braided in common style. I finger the brass rings in my own goatee, which is coarse and stringy by comparison. How'd you do? Just fine. Some kind of inventor, are you? Ugh, scroll, scroll, scroll. I Name's Theodore Redgrave. Brotherhood of the Boffins. But tell me. Uh, but call me Teddy. Most people do. Boffins, you say? 
<sighs> scroll, scroll, scroll. Ah, yes, the Royal Society funds all kinds of industrial research nowadays. There's a brotherhood for every branch of science. I'm with the DA, Division for Automatons. Your automaton has it got a name? This here is Otto. Perfectly friendly, he is, if a little odd. Stands to reason, though, who among us isn't a little cold? Struth, if I've ever heard it. <laughs> Struth. What can I call you, sir? Atticus Daly. Teddy pats the automaton with his fat paw. Mr. Daly, from the both of us, it's a pleasure. Otto's gonna need some tweaks before the brawls. We'll have him fit and fiddle a, fit as a fiddle by then. Brawls must mean the pit fights. Aye, the werewolf pits to be precise. See, I'm a hunter of fell beasts and a monster. And monster. After the pit fights, those outlaws are all tatter medallion. Sorry. Tattered... Tattered medallion. Yeah. Uh, that means beat up, apparently. Much easier to take in for a bounty. Only three days here and the moon is full-bellied. Better have a good, good mind to who you're betting on. It's quite an occupation. Must never be a dull moment. Ooh, my spryness leveled up. There's true. I just knew you were a man of culture. And that's on top of having a stature, of the kind of stature I look for in a cove. A man. Eager to be on my docket while partaking in the pit fights. Fetching offer, though, I don't want to commit just yet. Besides, the stranger wouldn't want me to be led astray by such endeavors. He strikes me as a kindly kind of fellow who'd cross the ocean and deserts while giving chase to his quarry. Wait a moment. If I had a little scrap to sell, would you be interested? And sure, those cogs are worth a good bit of sterling. So the clog cogs I collected. Oh man, that is money. I got 12 S. I guess sterling. And zero P. Pleasure doing business. Take care, Teddy. Let's see. Dreamer. How you doing, Dreamer? Another gentle cost. We're on a journey to the land of Nod. Another chicken has to get plucked. Perhaps I'll have a rifle through his pockets. Let's let him be. This is a place I, uh, I like, apparently. I shouldn't go burglarizing everybody I meet in it. Latisse wooden screens and high back seating provide some comfort and privacy for those that can afford it. These booths are made of luxurious calf leather. Calf leather? My poor brothers and sisters skin for creature comfort. The leather is well oiled and plush with dimple riveting. Delicate china and exclusive menus of the den's offerings are available here for those of a more discerning taste. Seems like I'm in for a treat on account of the stranger's pocketbook as a fat Christmas goose. Let's make the most of it then. Surely you didn't bring me here for the elevated conversation and pleasure in my company. Better be on my guard. He already could have killed me and collected my bounty, but he didn't. I guess I should hear him out. It's worth seeing what he's after. Aha! She's still chiming in. As if she had some kind of preferential status. Alright, let's get on with this. The menu is embossed with an array of oral morphines, liquid and powder cocaines, and all the manner of midnight oil. Midnight oil is opium. Teddy seems an interesting chap, and the automaton is quite in quite something, isn't it? Bugger all the small chalk. 
Bugger the small talk. Why did you bring me here? Animal instinct leveled up. We got plenty of time for explanations. Why don't we start with a sample of some of the den's wares? Now we're talking. Perhaps this fell is not so bad after all. So many deer poisonous variations. It's hard to decide what will hit the spot. Must say I'm impressed with your discretion. I would have thought just any fix would do. Thanks, I suppose, but I know it's not from the kindness of your heart. We'll see if you're singing the same tune when it's said and done. Now then, while you think about the entree, I'll prepare the appetizer. Takes a small tablet out of his shirt sleeve, cracks it in half and drops it in my teacup. The other half goes down his own. Can't expect me to drink that. Yeah, tea. Never touch the stuff. Half and half, an equal dose. I wouldn't kill us both now, would I? You need to turn it down. Even so, I'll pass. Heh. <laughs> Not your cup of tea. How about some white wind elevation? You must be fond of that one. His light-hearted confidence seems like a front. I get the feeling he knows you better than he's letting on. Any sort of psychic barrier is useless. The bothersome hag won't leave me be. And I, here I am face to face with a telepath. Enough of this facade. Not only did you pick my local place, but you pretend to suggest my favorite blend like it was a lucky guess. I know a little something about you, it's true. But it's part of my part and parcel to my profession. I keep tabs on people who pique my interests. What is your profession, exactly? Let's say I look after Her Majesty's interests with great vigor when they align with my own. At first his cryptic speech was alluring, but now it's plainly an annoyance. On with it. You've tried my patience long enough. Very well, I already know of your life as a roughneck and a panhandling mage. But what about before that? What about the Sacred Heart? It was where I grew up before I looted the nun's coffer and took to the streets. I gathered as much. What I'm not sure about is your parents. All I really have are guesses. This character gain, has gained the retrospective trait and will now be able to select that the dialogue options that require this trait. Yay! My mother likely gave me up because uh, she couldn't pay my keep. I suppose my father either died or walked out on us. So the sisters never told you anything about your parents? Can't fa say for sure, but it's too bloody unpleasant to think about. If the memory's there, we can call it back gently. This fellow's lost his mind. Something occurred at Sacred Heart that you've forgotten. With the help of an opium dream, you might recall the details that will lead to your mother. Lead me to her gravesite, you mean? What would that accomplish? Oh, on the contrary, I believe she's alive. Her name came up on a ledger in at Bethnal House. What's Bethnal House? A private mental hospital. Okay. I've at seen my share of swindlers, but this one takes the cake. I don't think this... Sorry. Just humor me a moment. Matilda is, of course, her given name, but do you know her family name? I don't think the sisters of the orphanage ever told me what it was. But if you could recall Matilda's family name, and it's on record at the orphanage and matches the ledger of Bethnal House, you could prove her identity at the hospital and, by claiming kinship, set her free. That means digging, digging up memories of Sacred Heart. Not exactly how I thought the night would unfold. I'm sure if my mother's alive, she's forgotten me. I don't mean to sway your opinion, but unless you can think back to those troubling times, 
and you won't be worth more than the price on your head. A bounty I'm assuming you're happy to collect? That's right, albeit less desirable. It's another way to ensure I won't have wasted my time. It's offering me a chance to live, but only if I can draw up those memories. So what'll it be? The dream dose and a voyage between the banks of memory? Or a death dose and the end of all your days? <laughs> Where are yours? I can choose death. Uh, I'll take the dream dose, thank you. Always choose life, chat. 